Let me stop recording now and I'll say um, one, two, three, in case the sync's not working. I think there might have been something, an issue with one of the last recording, which I might have to fix. Um, are there any queries or questions people have? Did the revision quiz go okay for people and the reg submission too? Mm -hmm. Does it seem reasonable, decent? Particularly with the um, available questions. I did want to point out one slight thing. Um, I think it was this question. Oh, what was it mentioned? No depressed or something. Uh, sorry. Um, I want to point out this thing. Um, that doesn't sound like you lost too many life though. Um, there was a question that was something like um, uh, something like this, I think. Um, let me just make up a random one. Um, I don't know, something that's along the lines of lines of this. Um, so one of the questions I think was like this. Um, it was a bit strict, so I think it didn't take into account if you correctly accounted for negatives once you had integrated it. So those ones I did um, bump up the mark just in case. I think you can see your mark, so you can check if you got an extra mark there. Um, otherwise, for this one particular, because there was only one box, it counted as a full mark, so I gave you half a mark if you were only off by one negative on a turn. So just you might have been bumped up by a half mark or one mark for that. But this was only this question, and it was only for that reason. If you did things like leave the plus scene or anything like that that I explicitly said not to do, um, I left that as, as wrong if you made that issue. Otherwise, you may have gotten half a mark or an extra mark, um, especially if it was a cancellation property because and if you typed it in properly. Okay, I just wanted to um, mention that in case people are happy for another half mark. Otherwise, I suppose we're to get started, so no queries to start off with. I'm recording, right? Yep, I'm recording on this. Okay, so moving on to topic three or chapter three, so sequences. Okay, there's a change of pace, so what do we mean by sequence? Well, we formally say it's a new type of function. Right, so we're used to restricting the domain of our function space. These ones only take in natural numbers as our input values. But the easy way to think about it is it's just a list of numbers, so an unordered arrangement. So to think of an example, the counting numbers, well, here the function is just outputting itself. So when we input one, we output one. When we input two, we, we output two. When we input three, we output three. So you can see that it's like listing the points of a function, but I only just need to list list a few of them. Okay, consider the even numbers. So I think I did this in the pre-lecture. If we um, input n is one here, we'll output two. If we input n is two, we get four. When we input n is three, we get six. Six. And what do we think the rule is? So this is typically would denote Tn to be the nth term. How do you think we go from list one, two, three, four to two, four, six, eight? What do we think the output function is? Let me just see here. Divide by two, not quite. If it was divided by two, so I mean, I'm starting with n being here. It's the other way around. Two, not plus two, because that would give me the sequence three, five, uh, three, four, six, five, two times n. So. We're inputting a in value of n and outputting two times that value. So this is the function which defines the sequence, but we only take n to be natural numbers. Okay, that's the change. And usually we call we refer to n rather than x because n is more natural to talk about a number rather than real number x. Okay, so that's how we define those. And there's a fair few more listed things. I might just list them on the screen. So odd numbers. Square numbers, right? One squared, two squared, three squared. Triangular numbers, these are interesting. You get these by simply um, pictorially adding a row below. So here's the first triangle, one, that's T1. Second triangular number, we put two below. It's sort of like bowling, right? You set up the pins below them. That's a triangle T2 with three elements. Oh, I don't know why I'm drawing that many dots in. That's a T3 triangle with six elements, one, two, three. So and that continues that way. So it's an interesting sequence. 
Fibonacci sequences where we define each one to be the sum of the ones before. So how do we go? We go one, two, the next one's going to be one plus the one is two, one plus the two is three. But for now, we just need to know that the, this is such a sequence. These things exist. Um, they're meant to go down, not up. And prime numbers, of course, number theorists out there, numbers which are only divisible by one itself. And yes, I've mentioned this before, but um, we use Tn to mention the ten nth term of this sequence, same as the function value. Okay, and a related concept to this is a series. And what do we mean by this? We simply mean the, the values of numbers we obtain if we sum elements of this of a sequence. So you can see that if we add the counting numbers, one plus two plus three plus four, this is gonna give us exactly the triangular numbers up here. Why? Because one is one itself, one plus two is three, one plus two plus three is three plus three, which is six. And then if we keep adding, we get 10. So you can see how we directly get the triangular numbers. Um, have it ordered zero, it's ordered, right? Yes, it, it is ordered. So um, I guess in that case, it means um, if we take a look at the counting numbers, say three, two, one, four, five, six, seven, this is not the same as the counting numbers in this order. So it is actually an ordered arrangement. It matters what order we count. So this is not equal. Yeah. That would be a binary sequence, I guess, you know, between zero and ones. Okay, so we are happy with what a sequence is and what a series is. Let's take a look at some, and yes, um, we do use SN to represent the sum of the first N terms. I think typically we'll just talk about this for arithmetic series, which comes up on Wednesday, but um, I'll just note it here that that's typically a thing you might see. Right, so um, how can we specify a sequence? Well, we've seen the first way to do it. We simply list the first two or three elements and then using the lips. This is a bit amb ambiguous because we could have any sequence listed after this. I could say the sequence 1, 3, 5, 48, 71, etc. But what would be the most natural way to extend this sequence? What do you think the next couple of terms would be? Yeah, seven, nine. So 7 and 9, do we agree with that? <laughs> yeah, so I, I would think that we were referring to the odd numbers. So we would just refer to it this way. So this is sort of one where in the context, I would assume this is how we continue the sequence. So we are specifying the sequence. So a less ambiguous way is to actually give um, a way to obtain the next term. So we can define a recursive formula. So this recursive formula defines the odd numbers above because how am I defining my sequence? Well, I'm gonna set the first term to one, T1 is one. How do we get the next term? Well, for T2 say, T2 should be T1, so when N is 2, plus 2. So T2 would have to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. And then T3 would be 3 plus 2, which is 5. So this is recursively building upon the next sequence. So it's a recursive formula to define this, this sum rule. Think a little bit like um, periodic functions, that we know how to extend the function. And finally, we could just give an explicit expression. So same with even numbers being t2 times n, we can give an explicit form for the odd numbers as 2n minus 1. And so this makes sense if we start off with n being 1, because when n is 1, we would end up with 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. So we'd get t1 is 1 here. Sometimes you might see 2n plus 1 if we specify the sequence to start at 0. But most of the time, we'll start at 1 for our sequences, as in in T1. And furthermore, to look at uh, series, look at the sigma notation at the end of this lecture, but we typically, for a series, just have the sequence, but with sums between them, of course, with an ellipse. So far, so good, everyone. <coughs> Can we see, can I see have more than function? Um, conditional function, of course. I mean, in, in a sense, that would be just be a function itself. So you're thinking if it has something of the form, if something, then output something else, output something else, that would be one function, right? Um, 
or you could think of multiple sequences, which would be your two outputs, or you could even input two objects. So there are extensions, but um, I think for this course, we'll just think simply in terms of one function, one input, one output. But yeah. Sure. Okay, let's, let's have a think about annotation. So if we're asked for the sequence 6, 13, 20, well, what's the first term of the sequence straight away? Do we agree with that, 6? I mean, it's just written there, expressed, right? The first term is 6. And um, not many points for the second and third term. Second term is obviously going to be 13 and third term 20. Um, what about the general nth term? Do we know how? Do we think we know how we could compute Tn for a general n? Yeah, I guess we're plusing seven each time, right? That would give us a recursive way to express it. Yeah, let's keep in track that we we expect it to add by seven each time, right? We get 7n minus 1. Do we agree with that? Do we expect something like 7n minus 1? Anyone's got another way? Yeah, so 6 plus n minus 1 times 7. I guess that's yeah, that's exactly the same way of expressing it to account for starting at 0, 7, 14 and selecting by 6. Yeah, so what's going to happen is we know we're, we're adding by 7 each time. So if we think about, say, going back to linear functions, it's going to define a line. So really, I'd expect it should be some multiple um, 7 times n, and then we just need to account for the first term. So for Tn, the difference is, of course, 7. So we know it should be 7 times n plus some term, some, some constant to determine how we start the sequence. And since T1 is 6, I'd expect that this should satisfy when n is 1, Tn is 6. So, so far it's this expression. And to get our value, our output of k, it's going to be 6 minus 7, which is minus 1. So that implies k is minus 1. So our expression is 7n minus 1 at the top here. Great. Compare that with the series as opposed to the sequence. If we want the series 6 plus 13 plus 20, well, what's s1 going to be? I mean, if it's just the sum of the first one term, just six itself, right? S2, sum of the first two terms, 19. And then you can probably see where this is going. We add just add the next one to get the sum of the first three terms. should be 39. Okay. And there is a way to get um, SN, but we discuss it on Wednesday. So I'll, I'll just leave it here for this part for the series here. Okay. Okay. Um, Questions with this, these two examples? Okay, let's try a few more and see what we can do with these things. So the nth, this time we're given the nth term of a sequence formula. So Tn is defined by 3n plus 4. Well, how do we get T1, T2, T3? What do we do? You would just substitute the values in, right? Agreed with that from um, the chat. So when n is 1, we'll get 3 plus 4, which is 7. When t is 2, we'll get 3 times 2 plus 4. That should be 6 plus 4 is um, 10. And you can see now, well, what's t3 going to be, do we expect? Yeah, it's just adding my 3 for this particular sequence. So indeed, 13. Um, what about this one? So now we sort of want to go the other way. We're expecting that the nth term, we're trying to find which term will actually give us 104 if we define our sequence by 5n minus 1. So how do we compute which term it should be equal to? Any thoughts? <coughs> Solve for n, exactly. So effectively we're assuming that tn is 104, we're solving for 5n minus 1 is 4, 104. And so at this stage, again, we're just solving for a constant n, except here we want to be careful. We're expecting a natural number. We're expecting an integer. 
other, a whole number. Otherwise, it's the same steps we know. So get n on its own, add the one, five n is 105. There's a five times approach attached to this, so we divide the five, n should be 21. So the 21st term is 104. T21 is 104, 124 is the 21st term. Okay, so good. Let's take a look at this one. So the nth term here is given by 103 minus 3 times n. Um, okay, here's a, another race. Here, um, simply just list out the first three terms. What do we get? If we're starting at n is 1. Chat 1, I think, this time. What do we get? 100? What about the next two after that? 197. 94. Oh, I think the <laughs> I think in person got it. So yeah, 197, 94. Excellent. So yeah, that's exactly what we get. Use the explicit formula, substitute n is one, we get 100. substitute n is two, 97, substitute n is three, 94. Right? You could put the explicit substitution step in, but I thought just for brevity, I've just skipped it here. Okay, what are we gonna do for this one? Well, we want to find the first value of n for which and we want to find which value would give us the first negative term. So you can see these decrease at some at a constant rate. So I would expect at some point we're going to cross a zero. So any thoughts what we want to do here to find that value of n? If we're aiming for the first negative term. Again, so for n, what are we solving for n though in particular? Uh, less than zero, yeah. So I believe in this notion, yeah, I left it as equal to zero. I suppose, yeah. We can think it's explicitly when it's less than zero, but it might just be easier to think when it's equal to zero and find the um, um, the next integer that's over or at least that value. Yeah, so if we're solving just equal to zero, sometimes it makes it a bit easier, but we need to make sure that we're ensuring it's an integer term. All right, so round to the nearest integer. And okay, I guess we can do more at once. So 103 minus 3 is 0, rearrange, 3n should be 103, divide by 3, 34.3, etc. So whatever the 31st term is, I expect that's going to be just above 0, and the next term over 35, that's going to be just below 0. So the 35th term will be the term where we cross 0, so the first negative term. And you can always double check this if you like, right? Substitute in n is 34, substitute in n is 35, you should find u35 is negative. Is n always an integer? In this case, yes, because we're talking about sequences. If n was an integer, we'd be talking about a function over the real lines or something, something like sine x or cos x. So, yes, um, otherwise we can't list them. Okay. Okay, so here when I check which uh, the members of the sequence, so out of 16, 35, and 111, which ones are actual terms that we can obtain from 2n minus 5. And well, what, what's, what's the go to rule we're using here? How are we checking for this? Yeah, yet again, so for n, yeah, exactly what Peter's saying. So sort of substituting this for t of n and seeing if we do get a whole number for n, exactly. So if we check it for the first one, if t n is 16, well, 2 n minus 5 is 16. What are our moves? Add the 5, 2 n is 21. Divide the 2, 10.5. Oh, okay. So if it was a member, it would have to be the 10 and a half member. That doesn't really make sense. Yeah, <laughs> I have to ask a question where that's not the same. <laughs> the worst thing is if I ask a, a yes, no question, and if I ask a yes, no question only for different questions, I lose track of which yes <laughs> you're answering to. <laughs> anyway, so yes, so um, in this case, n is not an integer, it's not a whole number. So it's 16 is not an element of the sequence. You can check that against yeah, so check that against 35, same move. We expect that um, n should be an integer for 2n minus 5 to be 35. In fact, more precisely, it should be a natural number. It should be at least 
um, the starting point, which is almost certainly one, but not necessarily. So solve for n here, add the five to n is 40, divide the two, n should be 20. That's a valid whole number. So it tells me that this is 35 is indeed a member of the sequence. In fact, it's the 20th term. Plug n is 20 back in, we should get back 35. And same thing for, um, yes, yeah, so noting that, same thing for 111. 2 minus 5 is 111. Can we solve for this? Add the 5, divide the 2. 58 is a whole number. It exists in the sequence. So to put it in together, out of, out of our choices, 16 is not an element, but 35 and 111 are indeed members of the sequence of the 20th and the 58th terms, respectively. Okay, so that should be... Everyone's okay with these? Sort of quick examples, but they don't require too much um, strenuous um, thought about it. Okay, here's a new type of sequence. So here we're given that Tn is 2 to the power of n minus 1, and we want to work out which term of the sequence is equal to 31. <laughs> Iman, have you copied and pasted? <laughs> what do you have to type? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> as above. Yeah, so we want to just check, well, solve backwards for n again. We want to see which n value would give us such that 2 to the n minus 1 is 31. Okay, so let's do our usual steps. We want to find when 10 is 31, so 2 to the n minus 1 should be 31. Add the 1, so 2 to the n should be 32. Now, this is a bit different, so the n's a power. What do we do to find n? What are some techniques we know? Yeah, we could do log 2. Can we think of another way to see this sort of a little bit more directly as well? So for the index, yeah, logs work, logs work. Can, some, can someone see this without even thinking about logs, by the way? Equate bases, that's another way. How could we equate bases? Nth root. Well, it's not really the nth root. Well, we need to find n, so that's, yeah. Close, Isabella. It's not quite true. The four, fifth roots. Can we see that? Yeah. So 32 is indeed 2 to the 5. So we can see this a bit more directly because luckily 32 is a power of 2. So in this case, 32 is 2 to the 5. So, well, they're equal bases, so that tells me that n must be equal to 5. Equal positive bases. Yes, up to 2 to the 17 is very easy. What is it, 2 to the 10s, 1,024? At one stage of my life, I knew what 2 to the 20 was, but now I've forgotten it's gone out of my head. It's like, uh, which one's 65, 536 or something? It's like, that's like 2 to the 14, I think. I don't know, it's gone out of my head. Maybe, yeah. Once upon a time, I knew my powers of 2. It's, I guess it's lost, lost practice. By the way, of course, if this wasn't an easy power of 2, you could still use logs. Maybe if you need to calculate it, you use natural log or log base 10, but you could still find this if this wasn't a convenient power of 2. But in this case, it is. And actually, we actually expect it should be for this to be an element because we need this to be a whole number. So if we're talking about sequences, we would actually be looking for whole powers of 2 in this case. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this element being a sequence, an element of a sequence. Yep, so 31 is the fifth term of the sequence. Maybe I'm thinking 2 to 16. There's like a rule about approximating. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're not doing too bad for time, actually. I was just, I thought, yeah, okay, let's keep going and see how we go. I might have a bit of time to discuss. Um, um, true, Luke, but. Um, if you're talking about a calculator, you sort of have to know what the nth root, nth root is. So it's it, you could do that if it was something like n to the 5 is 32. So you could use the nth root to find the fifth. You could use the form of the, the calculator. I'm assuming that's what you mean. You could use the fifth root to find 2 in this case, but the 2 is on the power. So you could only really do the, the root equation if you knew what the root was. The problem is we're trying to find what we're taking the root of. 
So basically, it's whether the, the n is on the top or the n is on the base. So the, the log, either the log or the direct base here would be the way to go about it. If I'm understanding the question correctly, which I know at times I'm not. Okay, everyone feels like they're okay with some of these started general sequence questions, examples. Okay, so let's go back to some series terms. So, series about series. When we have, um, so we noted that these uh, series are basically just the sum of sequence terms, right? And one way to express this is if we know the general rule of a sequence, we can express the series using this sigma notation. So this is just a capital sigma, so a Greek letter uh, for sigma, right? And it basically just means, so there, there is a bit of um, history about um, where this, this came from. I mean, this is sort of where possibly where the um, idea of thinking about these sums came into play, particularly with um, geometric arguments. Um, but anyway, this isn't a history lesson. So um, basically all we need to remember is it stands for sum, sigma for sum. And how we read this is we're basically just saying, well, we want to express this the sequence term n. We want to sum this term through from a lower bound of one up to the upper bound of ten. Okay, so this this here is our rule, our Tn term that defines the sequence. And for our sums, we use this notation to indicate what we're summing to uh, from and to. So if we well, what do we think this is going to represent if we try and just use the ellipsis? How do you express what this sum expresses in shorthand notation? Any thoughts either here or in chat? <coughs> the sum of terms one to 10. Yeah, Mark's kind of got the best way. I like how it's written one plus two plus three all the way up to 10. So exactly, something like this. I think I've got an extra four. So again, here it's in, it can be possibly ambiguous what the dots here mean, but the most natural way to think about how to extend this is to go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. Sometimes what you might do is if you're not so happy with the sigma notation, you might put the rule halfway through. So you might say, well, I'm adding all these terms and what, I'm, what my general term should be should be this thing, n, and then keep adding through to 9 to 10, just to make it explicit what we're adding here. Um, but you should be familiar with um, this actual sigma notation to represent these things. Okay, what was that question? Does anyone have in terms of this before the lips? It's, um, my rule of thumb is try to have at least two or three, two is a very minimum, because if you wrote something like one dot of 10, it's, it's a bit hard. Do you mean, uh, you could mean the triangular numbers. If you say one dot dot 10, do you mean this thing or do you mean something like one plus three plus six plus ten? So if particularly if you don't if you start off with nothing but only one term, it's very it's very vague how the actual sequence continues. But in this case, as soon as in, in fact if we had one and two, that could still be vague because I, we could be talking about one plus two plus four plus eight plus sixteen. So even two sometimes is not very clear what how the um the sequence continues. But as soon as I've written at least these many here, it's, there's not really much. It would be pretty insane if I didn't mean to continue 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I guess the short answer, much shorter answer to your question is it depends on the context. Is it clear what you intend to be the rest of the sequence? Sometimes, especially if you look at coding theory or something, you know, you have to address these sort of ambiguities because the computer may not register what this means very clearly sometimes. Okay, so we're happy with what this sigma notation means, at least for this one almost truly example. Let's try another one. So the sum of the square terms n squared from one to five. Well, how would we simply express this? We're not asked for exactly what the value is here. We're just asking how to express it. What do we think? 
sorry? The base would be plus one and the exponent would be two. Okay. Yeah, the base would be plus one, exponent would be two, and then we just, I assume, just add, right, with each new base. Yeah, yeah. so exactly. So, yeah, Iman, oh, you didn't hear my instructions. I said we just wanted to express it. Uh, well, I guess 55 does count. Um, let me check. <laughs> so, yeah, just as an expression, it's one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared plus five squared, which let's uh, take a look at it and see if it's right. That's five. 9, 14, 16 is 30, 25, 50. So it is indeed 55, but sometimes, especially depending on if it's a very theoretical, it tells you more information to leave it in this in this unsimplified form. So, yeah, so you always certainly want to actually simplify this, but sometimes it makes sense to leave it in this expression. Sometimes it can tell you more information in this way. Take the simplest way to express it, takes the space. Oh, I guess that's because you're typing it, right? Well, just be careful what you're asked to do, right? <laughs> and of course, to compare it with this one, here this is actually a bit different because we're starting with n is zero. So this time we want my we want the lower bound to be zero. We're summing two to the n from zero to five. To simply express this, we simply well again replace the expression with n is zero here, n is one here, n is two here, through to n is five. And that's the, that would represent this sum. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'll leave you to check what it is, is exactly. But the point here is just the notation, right? Yeah. Yeah. At least for this example we're given. Okay, a few more examples to go with for these ones. So, okay, this one we actually, if it says evaluate here, we actually do wanna compute the actual value you know, evaluate it, compute what it should equate to. Well, it's just simply 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and we just sum directly, you all, 3, 6, 10, 15. It should be 15. Okay, not much to say there. Um, this one, so summing from the term 3n plus 4 from 1 to 4, how many terms am I summing, by the way, if it goes from one to four? Yeah, just four terms. So here um, we can even um, simply express what the three n plus four terms. It's not quite five. So it would be five if we started at zero. So yes, that is, you have to be very careful that, uh, especially a lot of textbooks and a lot of conven course conventions, half the time we start at zero and half the time we start at one, <laughs> confusingly. Um, most of the time for this course, we're starting at one. So there's only the terms with one, two, three, four. Okay, so mm -hmm. if we expand this out, then is the top term from n equals one to the nth term or after n repetitions? Um, well, when I say the top term, I will typically refer to um, the last term of the series, rather. So the series just after we've inputted n is four. I might refer to the entire series if I mean the all repetition, so all terms together. But typically, I might just um, say this is the the lower bound term, the upper bound term. Or if I say bottom and top, I might just refer to one and four. Usually, I might I'll typically say term if I mean the actual um, uh, expression versus the bound. Okay, I'm not sure if that. I'm not sure if the many different ways I'm exp ex um, going to express this is helpful or less helpful. But um, is the top term from equals one to term? Yeah. So he he. Um. By the way, usually I would only ever talk about. You wouldn't combine these. You wouldn't say um. You just refer to n to be the variable that carries the terms. So you typically wouldn't say to the nth term if my n is the actual thing we're trying to sum over. Otherwise, it's confusing if there's n here and n at the top here as well. Okay, I'm not sure if that's more or less confusing. <laughs> um, I feel like I've just answered that. I think I've just confused you more with that answer, sorry. <laughs> Only ever increments by one, right? Yes, with this summation notation, um, yeah, there, there are some ways to 
um, expressed if let's say you want the odd numbers you'd write n odd underneath here I think almost certainly in this course it's just going to be increments of one but there there are generalization and extensions of using this notation you almost always can just rearrange it so that it does increment by one anyway um, what is in my hand uh, yeah so I don't want to talk about uh, I don't think we go too much into the actual re-expressing of summation terms. So here, we'll just stick with direct substitution. There are methods which involve manipulating these sums. So you can take, you know, you can split up the sum here and take a common three out. I don't think we do that very much here. So um, I would suggest, keep that in mind, but I suggest most of the time we'll just expand it directly. But that is another approach with these things. Okay, for this one, let's just do it directly. So what do we want to do? I even put in the extra step of substitution um, um, to express this term, starting with n is 0, then n is 1, n is... Oh, why is that? Why is that 0 to 3? Something's gone a bit wrong here, I think. So I need to correct this. That should be the same as what... The question we're given, right? So they change it to a one, change it to a two, change it to a three, change it to a four. My apologies. So now my bounds have got shifted. And yes, I guess I'm going to have to change this for all of them, right? If we start from one to four. So in this case, um, rather than. Maybe we should change the question. <laughs> should I just go back and change the question? Okay. Hopefully that's not confusing. I'm going to. I'm going to change the question rather than the the solution, otherwise I'm going to have to correct it everywhere. Apologies. Um, don't do that in the test. <laughs> if it's an exam, then you should correct your solutions. Don't correct the question. Um, at least you can see what you do if it was one to four anyway, right? So, okay, let's just consider this to be zero to three. All it does is shift this by one, right? So. Ex um, express this with n is 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. So that would give us this expression. So ignore these bounds here. So 3 times 0 plus 4, 3 times 1 plus 4, 3 times 2 plus 4, 3 times 3 plus 4. And explicitly, this would give us 4, 7, 10, 13. And then we can compute this sum directly, which is going to be 34. Exercise, do this question correctly with the bounds being n to 4. Yeah, sorry about that. I've sort of must have missed that when I was putting up the notes, but it should be zero to three, or at least matching the solution better. Okay. If it was one to four, it would simply be this plus this plus this plus the next term over. Seven point six. what is it gonna be? This this one would actually be seven plus ten plus thirteen plus sixteen. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be 46, yeah, so that one's 46. There you go. We did both problems. <laughs> save, save ourselves. <laughs> All right, um, next example. Okay, this one's surprisingly tricky for some people sometimes. So we want to sum 2, the constant 2, from 1 to 10. Now, what do you think we're going to output? Um, so Peter says 10 times 2. Do we agree with that? It's not two on its own. That's not what you get if you sum two ten times. Um, that's not quite the same one. No, that's not quite the same. So, yes, that's why sometimes it's a bit of, I think it's not the same. Let me just check. Actually, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, with the ten, it is the same. But um, I guess that doesn't change how to express it anyway. It's not two to the power of ten. Although maybe that was mistyped. Well, let's see what it is exactly by expressing it. So what do we do? Well, we in, when n is 1, we output 2. When n is 2, we output 2. So if we expand this out, we're going to get this is the term when n is 1, when n is 2, through to when n is um, uh, 10 here. We're going to express 2 10 times. So we're summing 2 10 times. We're simply multiplying it by 10. So it's 10 times 2, which is 20. It's surprisingly often that you might say this and just write two, but that's not the case. It's really, um, no, I don't, oh, yeah, I'm told I can. I thought that was going to be the whole document. Yeah, it's simply going to be 
the number of terms here times this expression in this case, which gets, which does get, it is a common mistake to just put two here, but it is indeed 20. Okay, we're happy with this one, so I'm in a constant term. I think there's only three more examples anyway, so let's see how we go. These, there's not much to this one, right? So how many terms are there in this series? If we're summing three and y seven from mm -hmm. one to 100, we don't want to compute this, we just want how many terms there are. There are 100, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're just counting when the terms we have one, two, three, 100, there's just 100 terms there. And it goes from one to 100. What about this one? This time it starts at, well, it starts at five going to 50. So how many terms do we think here? Well, that would be if we were jumping by fives. So if we jump to 5, 10, 15, 20, we're not doing that here. We still want every number, 5, 6, 7, 3 to 50 here. 45, do we agree with that? Should that be 45 from the difference of 50 and 5? Oh, 46. We have a 46. It's indeed 46. So you have to be careful that this, if you just directly find the subtraction, it doesn't account for including both endpoints. So you can see here, 100 minus 1 is 99, but there are 100 terms. So in general, it'll just be the upper minus the lower plus 1. So think sum from 1 to 2, there's two terms, 1 to 2. So there's actually 46 terms, so just be careful with that one. Um, write 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10 up to plus 25 in sigma notation. Well, any thoughts? There's three things we need here, right? We need a lower bound, we need an upper bound, we need the formula. Yeah, we'll start off at n equals 1. So, yep, need to work out the formula and the limits of the summation. We'll start off at n equals 1 is the most simplest way to express this. It's not the only choice, but we can start with that. And if we um, try and compute the actual formula, we can see we're adding by three each time. So in a similar sense, I won't give the entire um, steps that we did saw previously in finding that k, but you can tell we must be multiplying n by three, adding some constant term. It should remind us of linear functions in a sense. It should be three n plus some k, and for, for this to go through t1 is one, we need that constant to be minus two. So if you want, I'll leave you to sort of write it out very similar to the previous example. I mean, when n is 2, we're going to get um, 6 minus 2 is 4. And then we'll continue. So that should be our formula. Now we just need to find out which which is which last term is going to give us 25. So what's the what's the upper bound? And well, I'll say even one from, from copy and pasting the same <laughs> response we just saw for n. So to calculate the last term that we're summing up to, well, that should be the end for which 3n minus 2 is 25. And then again, we add by 2, 3n is 27, n is 9, so it is indeed a valid um, member of our sequence. So we're summing from 1 to 9, the expression 3n minus 2. And we write that as so. Is that the only way we could have expressed this sum? What do we think? Is this unique? No, I mean, it all depends on the fact that I chose my, my variable, my counting variable here to start at one. So I could have started at zero. So we could have considered what happens if n is zero with this to be the t zero term, etc. So other ways we could express this could be something like, um, Something from 0 to 8, 3n plus 1. So when n is 0, we still get back to 1. When n is 8, we should get back to 25. Or something like this expression. Not much point why we would start at 15, go to 23, but we could re-express it. Um, what's the minus 2 for? Um... You mean re-express it without the minus two? We couldn't. We couldn't have that expression because, well, we'd have to have a fractional n part that that sums by a consecutive term. So you'd have to sum it something like a third, four fifth, four thirds, or something. We're not going to discuss that. So 
I think you do need it to have, there needs to be some constant term there at least. Oh, but you're, you're right that, yeah, you're right that we can change the minus two term. Um, I don't think we can have plus three either. I think I'm missing, yeah, anyway. So yeah, there are some patterns to what, what are, what's allowed for these values. Okay, same exercise, but this time it's decreasing. So 101.99.53. What do you think the formula would be if T1 should be 101 and we're subtracting by two each time? What do you think the formula for Tn should be? Any thoughts? I quickly jot that down, try and work out what the formula is. I know it's going to be, have to be 2n plus or minus something. What's that something going to be? What's going to be the overall formula? This is 2n minus 2. 2n minus 2 would give me 0 for my first term. I want the first term to be 101. I'm going to need a bigger, bigger number. <coughs> 50n minus 2. That's going to jump by 50s, though. It's only jumping by a two each time. So I think you've got the term in the, in the, the other way around. Hundred one minus two n. Almost, but the problem is that n is starts at one here. So maybe it's worth if I just note it here. So T one should be two n plus k. I'm expecting a difference actually of minus two rather. Minus two. Minus 2n plus k. For this to go through 101, I expect that 101 should be minus 2 times 1 plus k. My k should be 103. It's plus there. That's, so if I add the 2 on the other side, it should be 103. So it should be 103 minus 2n for my tn term. It should be an n there. Okay, so it takes a bit of practice, right? Um, No, it doesn't have to, but um, well, let's see. Watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the solutions and see it starts at zero for some reason. No, it's 103 minus two n. Phew, <laughs> ends if we start at one. Yes, I mean it's a choice, right? We make a choice a choice of sigma notation to start at one. But this is almost in this the one we'd start with. So in this case. We just need to find what the last term should be. Where do we, what's our ending, what's our upper bound of our n? And so we just solve for n, tn being 53 again. And that'll give us this equation. Rearranging to n should be 50, so n should be 25. So we're summing from 1 to 25 of the term 103 minus 2n. Again, it's not unique, just one way to express it. I believe there's only one more. Is there any one more? Yeah, there's one more question I've just already given away. Anyway, let's go back a step. This one's a bit trickier. So this one's 16 plus 25 plus 36 plus 49, all the way up to 144. Now, what do you recognize about, we want to express this. So we want to find, we want to work out what this sequence is actually doing. How do we get an actual formula for this? And those are squares, right? Does everyone recognize those? They're perfect squares. 16 is 4 squared, 25 is 5 squared, 36 is 6 squared, etc. Yep, so it's different from that. Uh, yeah, these ones are quite different by, um, they're different by constant term. And we recognize that it's 4 squared plus, um, plus 5 squared plus 6 squared all the way through to 12 squared. So to re-express this, we can simply say, well, that's the given expression. And it's exactly the left-hand side, and to tie it in as a tidy sigma notation, well, we just take terms from n is 4 through to n is 12, and our rule is n squared, running from 4 to 12. <coughs> Excellent. Thanks, Iman, you've given away the challenge. <laughs> How could you write this as a sum sign from n equals 1? <laughs> There you go. So yes, indeed, you can you can write it as n equals one to nine of n plus three squared. I think. So have a bit of a think about that before you thought <laughs> you saw the answer in the chat. 
Right, so that's that's introducing sequences and series, or at least the general types of sequences and how to express them. Next time we'll look at arithmetic sequences. Can it be recursive? It sure can. In fact, there's problems about, um, I guess we're just, just on over time, so we won't cut off a little bit of an echo, but there are ways you can um, find series of series, right? Or you can define, you can define a, a you can define a series over a recursively defined sequence. And yeah, there's, there's many different directions you can extend these to. Okay, so um, I guess we'd better leave it there, be on time. Next time we look at automatic series. Um, and this is the last week before Flexi Week. So there is still a week, uh, a tutorial well, today if you haven't had it, and on Wednesday afternoon or evening, and a lecture on Wednesday. Otherwise, after that, we'll um, have a break, <laughs> a flexible week. Okay, any other queries or questions before I stop the recording? All right, I guess I'll leave it there. So um, I'll let you get to the, to the tutorial. Mm -hmm. Is your estimation still due? It's going to be due, yes. And actually, that's right. Um, this one, I really do want to try and get that done this week, if possibly Wednesday. But you saw what happened last time I said Wednesday. Um, but I do want to get that to you before the break. Um, it's going to be due, what have I said? Is it Monday? I think I said Monday when we're back in week seven. What did I put on the on the course outline? Monday, October 24th. That is indeed a Monday, right? Okay, it's 14 days from today. So yes, it will be. Um, follow what Pastine said. Um, sure. I mean, here I'll give you um, probably one of the most more famous ones: the recursive, the Fibonacci sequence. How could you define this? I mean, this is going a little bit off tangent, but you can define this by the following set T1 to be 1, set T2 to be 1, then Tn is simply Tn minus 1 plus Tn minus 2. And th these three rules are going to explicitly define this sequence, right? T3 should be 1 plus 1, which is 2. And again, sometimes this starts at and is 0 and n is 1. So there are different ways you could express this depending on where the index is. But sure, there's, there's various ways to define a recursive sequence. I mean, series, um, let me try and think. Um, I guess you would probably just try and, uh, I guess it would really just be re-expressing a sequence like this recursively. So let me think. Um, you could say something like, let's say K goes one to N. I guess this is just, well, I guess this isn't really a cross series, it's just a double, double series, right? You could have some term here, summing over k's, and then sum this from n equals 2 or something to infinity or something random like that. Maybe I shouldn't make it infinity yet. For, or there are things where you could say, um, extending this, you could just say um, sum over, you could define this using some recursive term and then say just sum over terms up to the uh, terms listed here and over some set. So yeah, you could have something like that. I'm, yeah, I'm struggling to try and think of a really nice concrete example here, but you can have something of those cases. Um, that's a bit hard to uh, something like this. You wouldn't really see something like this because it's like, um, I guess the thing is the, the series is defined by whatever's here, right? So um, when you take a look at a series, I guess it's not really quite defining the sequence. So really, if we're saying some sum over sum like this, it's really just equating sums rather than defining them. So I don't think you'd really see an expression like this, which defines a series. In terms of, I mean, you can just throw arbitrary series signs everywhere and just get an arbitrary sum. So. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah, that's not really quite what a recursive series would be defined at, as. Um, 
Fibonacci works. That just gives me an equation. Uh, there's a sort of a difference between. This is way off, to off topic, by the way. This is really an assignment, right? When you have an equality like this. Um, when you look at these sums, already things are already assigned, so this would really just be an equation. So it sort of means different things in a sense. Anyway, that's going way beyond what we need to talk about anyway. So I might just cut off the recording now, and <laughs> so people aren't panicking about and learning all this stuff. But yeah, I, I, yeah, there, there may be things like that. No worries. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you sort of explore that a little bit more. All right, let's stop the recording. We've seen enough. Thanks, everyone.